All right, so excuse the noise of that thing. It's going to turn on and off in the video because I'm in my garage. But anyway, two years ago, I made a video on how to make a skid plate for a kayak, which is this. And the video is kind of long, so today I'm going to remake that video, just make the video shorter. And I'm going to show you some uh, tips you can do to make life easier. Because this can be kind of a pain in the ass to make, depending on how you go about it. So um, I'm just going to show you the supplies that you're going to need. Uh, this is going to be my heat source right here. This is what I steam crabs with. And you definitely want to do this outside. I'm going to actually open up the garage door whenever I do it. Um, even if you have that, a uh, torch will be nice to uh, work some small areas. And you can actually make one of these with, with this torch. The type of pipe that you can get uh, depends on what you want. If you want to do a thin one, which that has the thickness of about a quarter. This is actually irrigation pipe. Um, you can find this at a Lowe's Home Depot. It's really cheap. I think you can get like an eight or 10 foot piece for 12 bucks or something. Um, and if you're in a car, they will cut it in half for you. But you can get irrigation pipe or the most common pipe is this, the Schedule 40. Uh, this is the thick stuff. And if you make your skid plate out of this, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I'm just warning you now. It's a lot easier to work with this thin pipe than it is the thick. Um, if you have a camouflage boat like I do, you don't want something white to stick out, um, you can go to the electrical department and get electrical conduit, which comes in gray. So um, this, it doesn't matter you know, how you heat it up, it's going to heat up the same way. Um, the tape you're going to use is two-sided tape. Uh, this is Scotch 3M tape, and the camera won't focus down in there, but that's what it is, and this is the 15-pound rating. Um, a friend of mine actually tried the extreme duty or the heavy duty. I think it has like a 30-pound rating, and that did not work. Um, this does work. Fresh salt water. Um, in the wintertime and cold water, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will not come off as long as you, as long as you put it on right. So... That's the tape you're going to use, and if you want to seal your skid plate on your kayak so no water gets inside of it, you can actually use some silicone, which um, I didn't originally do, do it, but uh, there was a couple comments about it uh, that people said that they did do that on theirs, so that's a pretty good idea. Uh, tin snips or metal shears, you're going to have to have a marker, really thick gloves, would be nice. Uh, these are actually welding gloves and that's pretty much it. So um, basically just to kind of skip some steps, what you're going to do is you're just going to take your pipe, you're going to measure how long you want the skid plate. I would actually cut it maybe an inch or two further just to kind of give you some room to work. Uh, the minimum diameter that you would probably want to get is about three inches. Um, just to again kind of give yourself some work some room to work and you just basically um, cut it with a sawzall or whatever you got and uh, just make a, a straight line only cut one side don't cut it in half and you just basically take it to your heat source in this case this thing and you just basically wave it over the fire just like that or you wave the heat gun over top of it whatever you got and then you just wait till it gets uh, really soft and you just keep on working it even when it does get soft and you just basically unfold it and this is um, this is half of an unfolded piece so once it's really um, floppy you just well what I do is I just throw it right on the floor and uh, step on it it doesn't have to be perfectly flat either so that's uh, that's basically step one um, the next thing you can do to make life easier is actually draw out this shape and the reason I know this is because um, I actually made a skid plate and then I heated it up and unfolded it and this is basically the shape that it gave me. And uh, you know I don't really have the dimensions of this because um, you can make this many ways but this is the basic shape that you that you want to make. It kind of looks like a, a skyscraper kind of. So that's the shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat this thing up. I'm going to put it over top of the, the fire, and then I'm going to bring it over here, and um, even, I just pried this thing off with a screwdriver, and, and even with all this crud in there, 
it still kind of wants to stick to the kayak. So this tape is uh, this tape is awesome. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera up here somewhere, and I'm just going to basically show you how to mold it over the curve because back here isn't a problem, but the curve right here can be a little tricky, especially if you're making a thick skid plate, which is uh, which is what I have here. And mine actually has a, a little flat spot right there from running up on concrete. All right, so this is basically it right here after you, you put it over the heat source. It's really floppy and it's easy to work with, but this thin stuff will, will harden up pretty fast, so you kind of want to work a little quick. And what I do is I just kind of work this back area first. I don't really worry about the uh, the curve yet, but you do want to you do want to leave enough material that's hanging off the off the edge of the curve. That way, it'll wrap around it. All right, so um, that basically took I don't know 30, 45 seconds for it to reharden. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a marker and draw a line right here. That way, whenever I reheat this up. And whenever I go to set it back down to make this curve, it'll be in the exact same spot. I'll actually draw a line the opposite way. That way I know where the uh, where the center point is. Alright, so for this part, I only heated up the front. And it might be a little hard to see because of where my gloves are. But I'm going to put it right there at the marker line. And I'm basically just going to run my hand over the edge of it. To kind of form the nose section and I'm just going to hold it here until it rehardens which doesn't take very long all right so this is basically what it looks like and you might at this point look at this and say to yourself I need to throw it away and start over um, you don't have to this happens all the time where it folds in over itself that's just because you just uh, cut it too big so what I'm gonna do is I'm just basically gonna take a marker draw out where I want to have it and then I'm going to trim the side of it right here with some shears and um, go from there. Alright, just to show you guys how much I'm going to trim off of it, just to kind of give you a general idea, that's what I'm going to trim off of it. And when I trim this, I'm going to go ahead and heat it up and make this curve section. Alright, so I just reheated the front of it again. I'm going to put it back on the same spot. And now that it's trimmed, it will it'll make this curve a lot easier and again just put pressure on it until it until it rehardens all right so that's basically what it looks like and to get rid of little bubbles like that what I normally do is I just take I just take my torch here and I just work that one little area I put it back on the kayak and I just put my thumb or palm or something over top of it and that'll uh, that'll get rid of the uh, that'll get rid of that little bubble. Um, same thing goes. Like there's some areas right here that you can probably see that still need to be formed. I won't heat up the whole thing. I'll just heat up this one little area and and work it from there. So that's that's basically how you do it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. I did burn the tip of it, which is fine on the inside, so no big deal. But but after you uh, finished it, what you do is take some sandpaper, sand the entire inside of this, just to make the uh, two-sided tape stick a lot easier. And if you have a brand new kayak, I would definitely sand the area that you're going to put this on. Um, I wouldn't use like a heavy grit sandpaper or nothing. You just kind of want to, kind of want to get the shine off your off your kayak, just to just to help it stick to the kayak, which it's going to stick to it regardless. But um, it'll stick a lot better if you uh, if you sand it. All right, I had to swap out batteries for my camera. But one other thing, if you're going to be making a thick skid plate, um, what I would do is definitely form the back of it first, and then when you get to this nose section, when you try to curve the material, you're going to want to put one hand here, and then actually pull the PVC around the nose and kind of stretch it out a little bit. But don't don't pull it too much because it will tear. Um, and because if you just if you just push your hand down, it's it's going to end up being a nightmare. So um, that's one other thing that I've learned. If you do make a thick one, it'll help you out a lot. So other than that, it's pretty easy to do. It's not hard at all. Uh, this probably took 10 minutes. It's definitely not perfect. It can be uh, can be worked some more. Maybe another 10 minutes or five minutes or something, and it'll be done. But um, yeah, other than that, 
pretty easy. You've probably seen this. This is actually a skid plate that I made for the belly of my kayak. Um, and as you can see, it's definitely helped a lot. So, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't slow me down or create a, create the drag that I thought it would have, but that's why I left it on there. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.